Thanks very much. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Uh, we're going to talk about, again, super patellar nails. Just a show of hands. Who in the audience typically for their routine mid-shaft tibia fracture uses a standard extra-articular technique with the knee hyperflexed? That's their standard go-to. And how many would use a super patellar technique? All right, well, hopefully there's a couple more hands that go up at the end of the talk. So before I get into that, this is absolutely critical no matter which technique you use. The starting point for getting your nail in is absolutely paramount. So your starting point has to be in the correct location, and you have to have the right trajectory. Otherwise, especially for proximal fractures, you'll end up with a malreduction. So again, starting point and trajectory, absolutely critical. The starting point uh, and this is to show you it really doesn't matter which uh, technique you use, whether you use an awl or use a wire and a reamer over the wire. It's critical, the point and trajectory. If your starting point is off on the left, that's relatively easy to fix with some of those honeycomb devices, which I'll show. The starting trajectory is a little bit more difficult to correct. So here you have the starting point is off. We can use the honeycomb type devices, whether you're looking at the AP or the lateral, to adjust the starting point. That's just a translation. Again, relatively easy to correct. You leave your initial guide wire in and then adjust off of that. If your trajectory is off, whether it's on the AP or lateral or both, you generally have to take the wire out and then restart and get your proper trajectory. Then you can ream or use your awl, but both of those are absolutely critical. Same sort of principle in the distal fragment. You really need to have your wire, your guide wire, your ball tip guide wire centered in the right position on both the AP and lateral views. And once you pass your nail, you'll be assured to have a very nice reduction in both planes. So the standard approach to tibial nailing, ones we're all trained with, or a knee is hyperflexed. It's an extra articular approach. We're all very familiar with it, but it has some limitations. The deforming force of the extensor mechanism is accentuated. It can make uh, the reduction, especially in the sagittal plane, difficult, the typical apex uh, anterior angulation. Especially for these proximal fragments, this co can cause the nail to exit that proximal fragment posteriorly, leading to a malreduction. And then there's a prax practical concerns. These are a little bit more difficult for the surgeon and for assistants, and it's certainly more difficult to obtain a good AP radiograph with the knee hyperflexed. So is this the best way we should be nailing tibias? So the semi-extended approach, I give Paul Tornetta credit. He's the one that originally uh, proposed this. It's a uh, much easier technique for surgeon and for fluoroscopy. The question is, what are the results? So again, easier reduction, less extensor mechanism pull, less deforming forces. Gravity is sort of working for you in this instance, and fluoroscopy is absolutely much easier, especially getting that AP view. So this is Paul Tornetta's original article in Core. You have a midline incision. You have a medial parapatellar arthrotomy through a relatively large surgical approach. You're subluxing the patella. This looks relatively gruesome and grotesque. And it's probably these figures that set this technique back about a decade. Because really, this is really not the modern way to do a super patellar approach. The big question, regardless of the technique, is what about the knee? You're working right through the patellofemoral joint. Well, you need specialized instruments to protect the knee, there's no doubt. And now most of the manufacturers have these cannulas. You have long insertion handles that protect the knee from all the instrumentation and reaming. And here's the technique. It's a relatively small incision, sometimes a little bit bigger, but it doesn't have to be substantially bigger, not like in Paul's original description where you're doing like a total knee approach. So this is a super patellar incision. You go through the quad, you insert your cannula, you do all your work through the cannula. And you can see here in the lower left, this is really not semi-extended, this is completely extended. And this really doesn't have enough knee flexion and you're going to end up being too anterior and in the wrong trajectory. So you flex the knee just slightly more, you get your good starting point and good starting trajectory. And then you do all your work through the cannula, and the knee, the patellofemoral joint, is protected. You have your starting entry reamer, you put your ball tip guide wire in, you do all your reaming through this protection cannula 
the knee is protected. You can even put the nail in in some systems through that very same cannula and protect the knee from any damage. So Roy uh, Sanders published this uh, about two years ago. They did diagnostic arthroscopies before and after placement of the nail, found no substantial damage to the cartilage. They did a follow-up study uh, with MRI scans and also no substantial development of osteoarthritis by MRI at about an average of a year. So that's the standard Paul Tornetta semi-extended technique using a medial peripatellar arthrotomy. There's also a newer technique. This is a little bit of a ripple on the uh, Paul's technique. Uh, Kubiak from Utah published this in uh, JOT in 2010. And this is an extra articular semi-extended approach. What they do is they check the medial lateral laxity of the patella before you make your approach and decide whether you're going to go medial parapetellar or lateral parapetellar. So if the laxity is one direction, you make your incision the other direction. So here, the laxity is medial. They're going to make a little bit, uh, make their incision on the lateral side of the patella. The patella retinaculum is incised, but the synovium and the articular, the joint is preserved. And we rely on some subluxation of the patella to get your approach. And here's some pictures from their paper. And similar kind of uh, positioning of the knee, semi-extended. The patella is subluxed, whichever way it wants to go, and you get your good starting point and trajectory. And here are some uh, clinical pictures. Uh, I just took these all last week. Uh, patient on the left, this was a medial uh, parapatellar approach, semi-extended. This was lateral, and this is a standard hyperflexed flexion approach with that uh, incision. And so this is, uh, again, videos, hopefully they play. Patient's knee function is actually uh, reasonably good. This is at about four weeks to six weeks post-op. Here's another one. He's a little slower. He's a work comp patient, so they're always a little bit, a little slower. So what about the outcomes? Knee pain. There's a number of papers. This is published 2013. Compared semi-extended approach, extra-articular approach, the Kubiak approach, to normal controls at an average of one-year follow-up. Found absolutely no difference in knee scores. And, and that's the theme. All of the studies to date have shown absolutely no difference in knee scores. And this is uh, Paul Tornetta's work in JOT a couple of years ago. The semi-extended intra-articular approach compared to the standard hyperflexion Average two and a half years, no difference in knee pain. And our group looked at hyperflexion with a medial parapetal approach to hyperflexion with a tendon splitting approach to the ex semi extended lateral extra articular approach, one year follow up. Again, no difference in pain or scores. And just finally, last slide if you have a patient that kneels for a living, does any kind of construction work, lays carpet, anything where they're on their knee quite a bit, uh, I would definitely consider using the super patellar approach. You can imagine it's certainly more bothersome to kneel on this than to kneel on that. So in conclusion, please consider super patellar nailing. I think the literature shows it's uh, safe. It's certainly easier. And in a lot of people's hands, in my hand, is the default technique. And I'm here on behalf of the OTA. We've got a booth. Please uh, consider joining the OTA, coming uh, as a guest nation member through the uh, 2017 meeting uh, it is in Vancouver. Thank you.